Okay, so here's exactly what I ate and how I eat almost every single day and how I managed to go from 94 kilos to 86 in a matter of three, four months. That's unbelievable. It is crazy. Hey guys, so today I'm finally gonna answer the question of how I got shredded <laughs> at Purdue. I wasn't actually flexing by the way, I'm much bigger. Before doing that, before going to the actual details of what I eat and the different pieces of advice, there are a few important points that I would like to cover. And the reason I wanna cover them first is because this helps you understand how my pieces of advice can help you most or even how other pieces of advice from different people can help you the most. So the idea is you want to adapt what you hear to your own goals and your own target. The first question is what type of body are you trying to achieve and why? The reason this is really important is because I personally can't eat the way a bodybuilder eats or the way someone who's trying to run a marathon eats or even someone who plays basketball eats. I'm mainly eating and trying to become you know, better and more proficient at calisthenics which means my goal is to be as light as possible while maintaining a certain amount of muscle mass throughout the year. So if I gain even the slightest amount of weight, my body doesn't feel the same. My joints get demolished because it's a lot of hanging and a lot of pushing and a lot of pulling. And that is really not easy when you have like just additional useless weight that's not muscle on your body. So if a bodybuilder, for example, were to go with the typical uh, dirty bulk and then cutting cycle kind of thing where they just eat anything to gain weight and then they just cut down i mean when he's gaining that weight when he has those additional kilograms of fat around his body it doesn't necessarily make the bench press that much harder or like the, the bicep curls that much different but if i were to do the same thing forget about doing pull-ups forget about doing muscle-ups forget about doing like any other exercise where you need to be as light as possible obviously not all bodybuilders do that and not all believe not, not all people believe in that but it really does make a difference in how different people bulk and how different people cut and and really their ideal target goal at the end so what you need to be doing right now is identifying what your goal is and why you want to achieve that goal. Question number two is what type of body do you actually have? And I know this is probably the question you want to find the answer to yourself, but it doesn't have to be super complicated. All you need to do is really watch how your body works. How fast is your metabolism? How fast do you tend to burn different foods? Are you someone who can just literally eat all day and not gain weight? Or are you someone who just like me a few months ago would gain weight just by breathing? There's science behind it and everything and I'm not gonna claim like I know everything behind it but it boils down to a couple of things and, and I think one of the most important is metabolism, uh, the amount of muscle mass you have on your body, the different types of food that you consume. Up until very recently I found out that I'm very allergic, very allergic to some types of foods and when, when I consume those my body doesn't identify them so when, when, when that happens it just converts it into fat because it doesn't know what that food is so it's just like okay you know what I'll just store it as fat make sure to analyze your body and, and, and look at how it reacts to you consuming different foods or you can like doing different activities how fast do you tend to burn calories when, when you work out or how much do you sweat and all those questions that seem like regular questions and questions you know you would just ask anyone you need to ask them to yourself and you need to have an answer to those it doesn't have to be super specific or super scientific just a general idea so for example my body um, I can't eat that much rice physically I can but if I eat too much rice my body just stores it I really don't need that much I can have like literally a handful and that'll be more than enough for like the day two days or even three days but if someone's out there giving me advice on like yeah you need to have a ton of rice I need to be able to look at his advice and be like it might be valuable but I need to scale that down to my own size and my own needs because I've analyzed my body and I realize rice in this case is not going to get me anywhere in this specific topic now I know it's a little bit of a general example, but everybody has a different body. So what you need to do is really sit down, analyze yourself, and then when you hear people give you advice, you need to understand how to adapt that so that it applies better to you. Number three is you need to stop thinking of eating healthy as a diet. Like the concept of a diet, I need to just forget for the time being. Diet refers to something being temporary. I don't think anyone wants to be healthy or look good temporarily, which means you have to implement a new lifestyle. Lifestyle infers or implies that you're looking for something a little more long lasting, more long term. I want to find a way to eat healthy, still have fun, enjoy the food and get all the nutrients that I need. 
And that does not necessarily mean you're on a diet. It just means you've changed your lifestyle. You've changed the way you eat, the way you, you view food and the way you view how your body works and, and what it needs in order to reach your goal. So make sure that the idea of I want to go on a diet or I want to be on a diet is, is really just like off the table. Now, obviously, if you're trying to cut for a competition or if you're trying to be at a certain weight, then yes, that is a diet because you only want to get down to that weight for that competition or that small period of time. That's fine. But I'm talking about year round when you want those results that last you all year, you want it to become part of a lifestyle. You don't, you don't want to be forcing it on you. Because even mentally and psychologically, when you think of it as a diet, you're tempted to like, oh, I'm so tempted to find that cheat meal or tempted for that to, to grab this or grab that. And, and it's just your, your mind doesn't want to be restricted by that word. When it's a lifestyle, it's much easier. Your mind and body are like, oh, I guess this is part of what we're going to do from now on. So let's stick to it. So that's a really, really important step. Number three. One last thing before I actually get into the exact foods that I eat. I need you guys to understand that I'm not a dietitian or a nutritionist or anything of that sort. I learned what I, what I learned from reading articles online, watching YouTube videos like this. So everything that I learned is, and everything that I'm gonna tell you is based off of my own experiences and the experiences of those people that I helped. Now, fortunately for me, those who I helped actually ended up getting good results, but it's not like I guarantee any of this stuff. Plus, I'm about to mention some very, uh, I would say extreme examples of, of certain things and I would highly discourage you from doing those things. And I'm gonna mention them more explicitly in just a few seconds. So I just wanna get that out of the way. Okay, so here's exactly what I ate and how I eat almost every single day and how I managed to go from 94 kilos to 86 in a matter of three, four months. That's unbelievable, it is crazy. But that's what happened to me. I was 94 kilos when I tore my ACL and by the time I did my surgery, you know what, let's say six months. You know, let's give it six months. I was almost eight kilograms now. So number one is no breakfast. Now I know I'm gonna get showered with Breakfast is the most important meal of the day and it might be for you, but for me, I genuinely don't feel a difference. As I'm filming this, it is 11 a.m. I haven't had breakfast, I've been up since nine. I don't feel down, I don't feel like I'm lacking energy. I, I feel completely fine. When I'm back home, obviously my mom doesn't like this. She wants me to have breakfast because she's a firm believer in that statement, which is fine. So when I am forced to have breakfast, or if for example, we're having breakfast with other people or other families, I tend to focus on things that are high in protein. So my number one choice is always eggs of different forms, scrambled egg whites, omelets, whatever it is. If eggs aren't available, or if I want something nice and quick, it's usually oatmeal. I try to you know, add a little bit of flavor with some fruits, maybe some cinnamon, honey as well is a great addition to that, but I keep it really, really simple. For me, breakfast honestly hasn't been that big of a, a factor in terms of, oh, I had to cut it. And the other thing is that over here, um, I don't have that time at like during college. I don't have time to go and grab a meal and, and, and go to my classes. My classes are at like eight, and then they go all the way to 11 or 12. So by the time I'm free, it's no longer breakfast, it's lunch. And missing breakfast is, is not even an option. So it's kind of how my schedule got me into this. And I think of it as, okay, the calories I was gonna consume at breakfast, I now can consume over lunch and dinner. The other thing is that if I'm gonna have breakfast, yeah, I try to focus on protein and fibers, but if it's a day that I know is gonna be long, I try to focus on having carbs earlier in the day. And then as I progress into the night, and I'll show you that in a second, I focus more on eating and consuming protein and, and just fruits and vegetables. Lunch and dinner, Monday through Friday is the same exact thing. It's been the same exact thing for the past, I would say two, three semesters. Purely chicken breast, seasoned with a little bit of salt and pepper. I have between two and four per meal. So two to four chicken breasts per, per lunch, two to four chicken breasts per dinner. And then per lunch and per dinner, I have two bowls of salad. Uh, these salads that I have, they include lettuce, spinach, smothered in olive oil. I add a ton of nuts, almonds, sunflower seeds, walnuts, pecans, and a ton of Parmesan cheese. And most of that is because I just enjoy how these taste and obviously they have a ton of benefits. Maybe if I add a little bit too much, I'm consuming way too much fat or healthy fats or whatever it is. I don't care, they taste good, so that's what I'm gonna stick to. There are certain days where the dining courts offer a large and a nice selection of fruits. I always full send on these. There is no limit to how many pieces of fruit I eat per day. My general rule though, and that's because bananas are usually what's available in every dining court, I eat between two and four bananas a day. I know these numbers sound like I am just eating all day, but trust me, these are only two meals, and those are two hours out of my day, and then the rest of the day, I spend drinking this guy two to four bottles of water from this huge water bottle. Why is my diet really strict and why is it so plain and bland? You might say, first of all, I think it tastes great. Especially when it comes to the chicken, you can add a lot of things, a lot of spices, a lot of seasonings that make it 
taste d different or better for you without really adding that many calories. So that's one part of it. And then the salad, by all means, you can add whatever you want, any other vegetables or any other healthy toppings to, to that salad. But the main reason I focus on doing this is because I personally can't cook yet. Hint, hint, stay tuned. But even if I did know how to cook, there is absolutely no time possible for me to cook the monstrous portions that I need to eat. Now, I, I can't just eat something small and call it a day. I, like Eating small portions makes me even hungrier. But when I eat, I would like I like to enjoy myself and, and eat as much as I feel like my body needs. And I need to put aside a really good amount of time in order to cook that. So for the time being, I'm just focused on the easiest option, the fastest option, the most practical option. And honestly, I don't count my calories. But from what I mentioned, I highly doubt that what I mentioned, like the chicken breasts and the salads are high in calories. So I think that's working perfectly fine for the for the goals and the target I have in mind. Now the weekends. This is where the fun happens. Usually on the weekends, and this is when I run out of meal swipes. Meal swipes are what gets me to the dining courts because I just decided I want eight meal swipes a week and then the rest I want to eat from outside. When I eat from outside, specifically on Saturdays, it is one meal per day. I eat it just once. It's usually 24 to 26 hours from my previous meal on Friday. And this is the first piece of advice that I would highly discourage you from following. It's not a nice feeling. I don't think many people can do that on a consistent basis. I've been doing this for over a year now, so I can tell you from experience not many people can. But the idea is when I have this meal at 7 or 8 or even 9 p.m., I go and I order two meals, two bigger plates. The entrees are teriyaki chicken, so that covers my protein content for pretty much the day. And then the sides are the mixed veggies. And I obviously have some teriyaki sauce on the side to dip that stuff with. Tastes pretty good and it's pretty cheap in case you're concerned about the price. Panda, this meal costs $9. I mean, a pizza probably costs more and is less nutritious for something. It's not your cheat day yet. On Sunday, though, I go all out. I look for as many calories I, as I can put in my body, as much fried food as I can. Um, just I just want to enjoy my day. Again, my first meal on Sunday is typically around 7, 8 or 9 p.m. Please don't do this. <laughs> I, I personally stopped enjoying this because like my stomach just doesn't feel good during the day. But the, but the idea behind eating at 7, 8 or 9 p.m. is because I live in the dorms and I have to walk all the way off campus to a restaurant and then get, get the food back or eat there and get the food back. And that's no less than 40 minutes to an hour, hour and a half if I want to eat. And it's just it's a huge waste of my time. So I usually try to finish all my work, my studies, my meetings, my workouts as early as possible. I, I focus and I, I make sure it's of the, of the high, highest quality possible. And then I go and I reward myself with a meal and I enjoy the rest of the night. That's how I'm programmed, that's how I function. It just motivates me to work harder and finish everything earlier on in the day. Now, with regards to the cheat meal on Sunday, as I said, I focus on eating as many calories as I want. I'm just trying to let my body enjoy it and, and get used to eating something different than chicken breasts and salad. So I, you know, as you saw from my previous video on Instagram, I like to eat pizza. Um, sometimes I take it a little bit overboard and eat multiple ones. That's perfectly fine with me. Sometimes I get multiple chipotle bowls. Sometimes I mix and match, get some, you know, a burger and a large fries from five guys and then maybe get a pizza from here or a chipotle bowl from there I, like it's just a mess but i enjoy it and because it's one day out of the whole week i like to treat myself with, with something really really nice so that's pretty much it with regards to what i eat but before you leave this video there are many important points that i want to highlight and i need you to pay attention to these because i don't want you to hurt yourself or you know harm yourself because of following such a strict and and, and i would say pretty extreme diet first first thing is don't eat at 7 8 or 9 p.m my body has been conditioned to work under extreme circumstances I can eat at 7 8 or 9 p.m. and I can still be very productive during my day not everyone's like this and some people might literally and metaphorically crash so please don't do this even if you know you can or you think you can or please just don't do this it's not the healthiest way to do it you can try intermittent fasting which is delaying your breakfast by a little bit and making your your lunch or dinner a little bit earlier so you have that eating window you can you can try that I, I sometimes do that but again because I don't have the flexibility unfortunately I have to stick to the eating at 7 8 or 9 p.m. number two is if you really feel like breakfast is an essential part of your day please have it one of the downsides of me not having breakfast is that when I'm sitting in a meeting or when I'm you know sitting around other people my stomach starts making proper whale noises and when I say whale noises these are loud it's, it's actually really embarrassing and really annoying and I often have to you know just just drink tons of water to just distract my stomach and make it feel like you know, like hold on there's food coming down so I drink as much water as I can and then I like head over to the dining court straight away if, if you think you feel down or you need energy from breakfast please have breakfast I would just say be wise about what what you eat and and, and make sure that it's actually something that helps power you throughout the entire day and if you're just you're like I don't need breakfast but my stomach feels weird and it makes noises then please 
please still have breakfast. Number three is my carb intake. As you guys can see, I don't consume that many carbs. It's just one day, which is on Sunday, that I just consume a ton. But during the week, I personally realized that my body, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, retains carbs in an unbelievable manner. And I really don't need that much carbs to, to fuel myself. I feel no difference whether I consume one scoop of rice, no scoops of rice, 10 scoops of rice. If my carb intake is purely vegetables and fruits, I feel energetic most of the day. I feel light, I feel great. Fruits and vegetables taste amazing. They help me digest my food. They, you know, they help with a lot of things. So that's why my main focus on carbs is fruits and veggies. Number four, which I need to attribute uh, to the weight loss is the fact that I walk a lot. The Purdue campus is huge. Most of the days I have to make multiple trips from the room to the classes, to dining courts, to offices, all sorts of destinations. And that requires a lot of walking. I'm gonna try to put a screen recording of the average amount of, you know, or the average distance that I walk during my days. And I think it's between five to six to seven kilometers a day, which is a lot. Uh, people sometimes when they want to walk as an exercise, they don't walk that much as a student again It's like my lifestyle kind of forced me to get into this. I also take the stairs every chance I get My major requires a lot of me sitting down in front of a laptop and doing nothing So when I see some stairs, I, I just take them in order to circulate the blood a little bit better in my body Give myself some more, you know steps uh, into my day Add a little bit to that distance that I just walked just to make sure my body is, is moving uh, as much as possible during the day when I'm back home and my mom is is you know, my mom doesn't really like this diet at all and when she's watching this video she's probably gonna hit me up and, and and say something about it but when I'm back home I try to focus on consuming carbs earlier in the day as I mentioned because you know at home there are traditional foods there are cultural foods and these <laughs> are not always the healthiest so that's for sure but you know when you're around the family and everything you, you need to enjoy life so when I'm around them, I focus on consuming those earlier in the day so that during the day I get the chance to burn those and, and get them out of my system or even try to work out later in the day and, and burn most or the majority of what I ate. So if you're in a similar situation where you're trying to avoid carbs and due to you know, certain circumstances every now and then, we don't, it's not really under our control, focus on having those earlier in the day so that during the day you can burn those out. It's really important to mention, and this is step seven, I think that I don't get all the nutrients that my body needs uh, from the diet that I told you guys. I understand that it's really specific and there's a ton of vitamins and nutrients that I'm missing out on which is why I'm actually going to visit a nutritionist as soon as I graduate. But for me, for my mental health and my physical health and my performance at the gym, it's it's been working great so far because, you know, I'm, I'm just consuming, I think, the bare minimum. If you feel like there are crucial parts missing from my diet, you are right. And when you're listening to this piece of advice, maybe you like the overall structure, but you're like, oh, he's missing these things. Feel free to add them to your to your diet. This is This is one of those many parts to this video where you should, and I encourage you to make changes to my diet. Number eight, I don't take protein shakes, creatine, supplements, amino acids, none of that stuff during the semester. My diet is really, really, really simple. I would say it's it's all about consistency and sticking to it. But yeah, I don't take any supplements because I get this question a lot. I really don't think my body reflects that I take supplements or I'm that big or anything. So I'm not sure why. But yeah, this is just to get that question out of the number nine. And I think this is the last one. This diet that I gave you helped me lose weight with one to two workouts a week. To be very honest, this helps maintain shape. But if you're concerned about performance, then you need to work out more often. If you've reached a stage where you've got a decent body, you just want to maintain it at this point, you know, you don't mind if your performance fluctuates up and down, I think this works perfectly fine. You know, just a couple of workouts with a really nice and, and solid meal plan during the week. But if you're concerned about performance, two to one to two workouts is definitely not enough. Every time I go to the gym, I feel like I'm heavy and I feel like I ever, like I just need to go back to where I used to be. Just to make sure this is not for you to just decide, you know, I'm just going to eat a little bit healthier and decide not to go to the gym. They don't replace each other. They work hand in hand. So there you go, guys. This is what I eat during my semesters. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know some of your thoughts in the comments. Let me know how you eat during the semester and how you've reached your goals based on you know your, your, your decisions about what to eat and what not to eat. Let me know if there are other aspects of eating or food that you want me to cover in future videos. Make sure you check out these two playlists. Let's see if I can get this right, these two. I'll see you there. Enjoy, peace.